Hello, in this presentation I will talk about flexible manufacturing cells and the use of robots in these cells. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to know and differentiate different types of industrial manufacturing in order to understand the advantages that flexible manufacturing offers compared to manual or classic manufacturing models for a given production volume. In addition to this, I will explain the elements involved in flexible manufacturing systems and specifically flexible manufacturing cells, as well as how robots are used within these cells and their distribution. Also, I will show some ideas regarding robot communications with other devices such as PLC and low-level digital signals in flexible manufacturing cells. To finish with the presentation, I will talk about simulation tools to design flexible manufacturing cells. Manufacturing processes can be classified into three categories, attending to aspects such as their production capacity, quality, part cost and flexibility. The selection of one manufacturing process or another will mostly depend on these aspects. Manual manufacturing processes are carried out by operators or by manual control machinery. Its production is low, the quality is generally low, but in exchange there is a great flexibility in adapting the product at a very high cost per part. Classic manufacturing using specialized machinery for mass production generally has a high production and product quality, while its flexibility to adapt to changes in production is generally low. This type of production achieves low production costs per part. Finally, flexible manufacturing combines flexible manufacturing systems that, allow, that allows medium or high productions with very good quality and with a medium or low cost per part, but unlike classic manufacturing, they can adapt to changes in production because the machinery is controlled by a computer, such as is the case of a CNC or a robot. So, if we compare the flexible manufacturing with manual manufacturing, we will observe that its production is much higher, the quality is better and also is safer, and more profitable for larger series despite of the fact that we have a low part cost. On the other hand, if we compare flexible manufacturing versus classic manufacturing, we observe that through flexible manufacturing we will be able to modify and adapt the product to market needs and changes in product demands. Producing similar products in a flexible manufacturing system represents no challenge or over cost, because it has been designed for that. In general, we will have a lower stock or store product because production can be adapted to demands, maintaining a medium or low cost per part. Therefore, if we focus on flexible manufacturing system, we see that there are three clearly differentiated levels. We have a first level in which a CNC machine or a robot processes a set of parts. Normally, this can be adapted to the production of new parts or to produce similar parts, but in a different way. On the other hand, a flexible manufacturing cell that involves two or more CNC's or robots. In this case, the machines are coordinated to be able to manufacture a specific aspect of the, the overall manufacturing process, and generally, the set of machines are responsible for manufacturing a part with similar characteristics. But because we can use multiple options within the manufacturing process, these can be greatly adapted. These type of cells usually include loading and unloading stations of parts and a PLC to coordinate machines. A cell lacks the glo uh, of a global vision of a centralized computer monitoring the overall production. This is indeed uh, what we can do with a flexible manufacturing system consisting of a set of flexible manufacturing cells that will be able to adapt the production to demand changes in a very generic way and at the same time keep a medium production volume. Obviously, the flexibility lies in the fact that machines can be reprogrammed or modify their work, but always within uh, what it was originally planned. If our robot or CNC machines do not include the possibility of manufacturing a part in a certain way, because, let's say, a specific tool is not available, obviously, the flexible manufacturing cell will not be able to manufacture that kind of part. However, once we have designed, designed a flexible manufacturing cell, 
it is quite straightforward to extend the uh, new capabilities if it's necessary. A parameter that determines what type of machinery or manufacturing system is convenient for us to use is the production volume. If the production volume of parts is low, we're talking about less than 10,000 units, then it is easy for us to use a CNC uh, machine or robot for production of those parts. In this case, since we have a low production volume, the cost per unit is usually medium or high, but in general, we will have a great adaptability. On the other hand, when parts are to be produced uh, in batches or in units of approximately 5,000 or 200,000 parts, then it is usually more convenient to use flexible manufacturing cells with one or more CNC machines and robots. In this case, the cost per part is usually medium or low, with a great adaptability. In some cases, a whole flexible manufacturing system can be implemented if the volume of production justifies it. But generally, for high production volumes with more than 100,000 parts, it is usually more convenient to use specific production lines for mass production, with the advantage of having a low cost per part, but with none or very limited adaptability. So the question that naturally arises for us is how we use robots in a flexible manufacturing cell. There are or they are seen just as another CNC machine, that is, a machine that allows us to manipulate or mill or drill or to carry uh, out some specific manufacturing process and that they can be easily programmed and adapted to various uh, uh, problems because we can use multiple tools. Sometimes it is better indeed to use robots rather than CNC machines for a specific process. In general, robots will be integrated together with other CNC machines among uh, the, the, or in, inside the, the manufacturing uh, cell and they will be coordinated by a PLC and all of them will be interconnected with uh, industrial communication buses as we will see. There are different layouts of flexible manufacturing cells concerning robots. Centralized, inline or mobile. In the first case, the robot is the main element of the cell and around it, it has all necessary equipment in a circle or semicircle. In the inline layout, a conveyor belt carries the product and the robot or robots perform the operations on the sides of the conveyor belt. In a mobile layout, the robot can move either freely or just simply using a conveyor belt inside the manufacturing cell, having a much larger workspace and being able to transport parts from one machine to another within the same flexible manufacturing cell. Every industrial robot has associated to it a robot controller. This controller is in charge of coordinating the movements of the robots and attend digital signals for local process control. They also use industrial fields buses when we need to transmit information that is higher or it's more complex than just a simple uh, bunch of digital signals. From a control architecture point of view, the controller can act as a controller itself, but also they can act as devices. In this case, they are being coordinated by PLCs so robots, so the PLC uh, coordinates the movements of multiple robots. So, in a flexible manufacturing cell, we can see different levels of communications. At the lowest levels, we have the robot with its input and output signals together with the robot controller to locally control the manufacturing process. Then we have uh, the manufacturing or the flexible manufacturing cell level in which we can use a PLC to coordinate the production of several robots or CNC machines. And then in the upper levels, we can find office computers monitoring the entire plant and usually they have access to internet. The response time of, different, of the different levels of communications is slower as we are on the top of the, this pyramid. So the lowest levels, we have response times of very few milliseconds, even below the milliseconds, to response times of seconds and even minutes at the highest levels of the pyramid. 
At the same time, the amount of information used in the lower level is just a bunch of bits, while in higher levels the transmitted information will occupy megabytes or even more. Robot safety is a fundamental aspect that we must take into consideration. So for that, protocols and requirements must be met to stop the robot if necessary. For all this, a flexible manufacturing cell has all required elements to guarantee safety through digital signals and also through field buses. Here, I show a couple of examples of how a robot with the different safety elements can be stopped. We can stop a robot from the robot control pad, from signals coming, uh, uh, digital signals con directly connected to this, uh, the robot controller, or also uh, safety barriers or emergency patterns, among others. To finish with the presentation, I would like to discuss the use of robot simulation tools in flexible manufacturing cells to detect potential bottlenecks, improve flexibility, and correct potential problems. There are fundamentally two types of simulations, discrete or even based simulations, which are in charge of simulating cues and flows between the different processes, as is the case of visual component software that specializes in the design of factories from a general perspective, or SimCAD, which uses uh, it's just another program uh, that can be used to run discrete simulations. On the other hand, continuous simulations are in charge of simulating what happens during the manufacturing process, mainly focus on the robot programming aspects such as sensing, co uh, collision avoidance, etc. They can be used to design flexible manufacturing cells, but at a small scale. They are not usually convenient to be used for large scale, because for that we have the discrete event tools. So, Continuous simulation tools, uh, in this case, we can use uh, the tools that uh, they are offered by each of uh, robot manufacturers, such as is the case of Robot Studio for ABB or KukaSim for KUKA, among others. Or we can just simply use generic simulation tools such as KupeleSim or Gazebo, among others. So in this presentation, I have introduced flexible manufacturing cells and their use of robots within them. Thank you very much.